<laughs> well, it is such a pleasure to be talking with Greg Bissonette, and uh, you are quite a drummer, and your resume is uh, unbelievable. You've worked with Ringo Starr, who has played a bit of drums in his time. Uh, who are some of the other names you've worked with, Greg? Well, I'm definitely one of the world's drummers. Yes, you are. Um, and they say you... Uh, 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 I couldn't make a joke. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, don't. <laughs> when I got out of college, uh, I went to a great, great music school in Denton, Texas, called North Texas State University. Now it's called University of North Texas. But uh, upon graduating, my brother Matt, who now plays bass with Elton John's band, he was already in the Maynard Ferguson Big Band, and he got me in with the Maynard Ferguson Big Band. That was my first pro gig recording albums and touring the world and then Matt and I both went from uh, Maynard's band into lots of other bands uh, I guess my next gig probably would have been Gino Vanelli then wow. the David Lee Roth band we did an album called Eat Him and Smile another one called Skyscraper another one called Little Ain't Enough and we toured the world like crazy I was in that band for seven years and then after that um Artists like Joe Satriani, Electric Light Orchestra, James Taylor, Santana, Spinal Tap, and but my great, my most fun, you know, gig. I'm I'm the biggest Beatles fanatic on the planet. I'm the biggest Ringo fan on the planet. So <laughs> to be Ringo's, you know, drummer in the All Star Band now since 2008, and then also working with him uh, in his other band that he had since 2003, it's just been the biggest honor. Pretty hard to top that, and, and starting off with Maynard Ferguson, wow, what, what a journey. I'm just impressed you know who Maynard Ferguson is. <laughs> oh, I, I know who Maynard Ferguson we're, is. We're old folks here. <laughs> well, me too, I'm 58, how old are you guys? I'll be 65 in December, and a lady never divulges her age. And I'm, I'm in between you, your ages, so. <laughs> oh, okay, never ask a lady her age. Unless she says she's an old folk. Now, I knew you weren't old, so you're not old. Come on. So anyway, um, yeah, so we're doing a tour with Ringo uh, October 13th. We start in Las Vegas. We have eight shows in Vegas at the Planet Hollywood. And then we go all through Texas and the East Coast. We, we have two really great shows, uh, I know for sure, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, at the Parker Playhouse. That's one of my favorite places to go. And, of course, you're... You're staying there, you know, right on the beach, but we'll be at the Parker Playhouse November 7th and 8th, and I know we wind up, and we go north, and we end, I believe, at the Beacon Theater in New York, and then uh, New Jersey is our last show for this year, so it's just the greatest. He's my favorite drummer and my hero, and, uh, you know, he's my favorite song and drummer ever. Nobody can play a song like Rainbow. Right and on top of all that, I hear he's a hell of a nice guy. He is such a dear friend. I mean, he's the kind of guy that really cares about his friends, too. In fact, he's he's always, you know, he's very organic food-oriented, and he's really into, you know, exercise and no sugar and just keep it fit, and he's, he's kind of my, he's all about peace and love, you know, of course, first and foremost, but he's really kind of my, I don't know anybody that's in the shape that he's in, and we just celebrated that in Capitol Records building. We just celebrated his 77th birthday wow. on 717. <laughs> Very cool. That's really cool. Yeah. I saw the All Star yeah. Band in uh, 2006, but Sheila oh, E. was right drumming with them. That was when yeah, Sheila E. was with them. Oh, it was, uh, it was really Rod Argent and uh, uh, Edgar Winter. And I'm trying to remember who else was in the band, but it was really good, and and um, I was front row, so I got. Wow. It was uh, my daughter caught his sweaty towel, and we still have his <laughs> towel. <laughs> wow, that is so great! Yeah, I saw that tour. That was a great tour. Edgar was on my first three tours: Franco, Edgar Winter, um, Billy Squire, uh, Hamish Stewart from the Average White Band, uh, Gary Wright, Colin Hay from Men at Work. Um, Wally Palmer, later from the band The Romantics, and now the band is, um, and then Rick Derringer, and now the band is Richard Page. For the last five years, he's kept the band the same. It's Richard Page from Mr. Mr. on bass and singing Broken Wings, and Kyrie, Steve Lukather from Toto playing guitar and singing Africa and Home Alone, and Todd Rengra on guitar singing all of his great hits. Um, Staying on the drum all day, I saw the light, you know, um, Greg Raleigh from Santana and Journey singing Evil Ways, uh, singing Black Magic Woman and Oye Como Va 
And this guy next to me, Ringo Starr, singing from the drum set. Boys, and I want to be your man, going up front and singing Photograph. Um, uh, he'll, he'll do Yell Submarine with a little help from my friend. That naturally matchbox. It's just, it's like seeing six bands in one night. Wow. Oh, that's you know, great. And he doesn't toss the word uh, All Star around lightly, does he? Oh, man. It's, it's such a groove. You know, I started working in 2003 with his band that would do promo TV shows and things when he played when he released his albums and he always plays drums on his own albums and I started doing that my brother and I both it's called Ringo and the Roundheads and then, and then around 2005 we did a DVD for PBS on stage and then he said I'd love to have you in the old stuff man it's fun playing double drums with you but you gotta have a couple of hits that you sang and then in 2008 his manager called and said she wants you in the old stuff man and I said Wow. Well, I don't have any hits. He wants you in the band. So I did that tour, and then, you know, you never know. Every tour, just, you never know. If you're going to do the next tour, you never know what the band's going to be. But I've been blessed by God to be there in every All Star band since 2008. So what a thrill. What a blessing. You must still be pinching yourself. I am. I pinch myself. I saw the Beatles when I was seven. Both my parents were musicians. My mom passed in 06 and my father in 08, but my dad was a drummer. My mom played piano and vibraphone. Uh, my sister played violin. My brother, as I mentioned, bass. Both my son and daughter play drums and sing and ballet for my daughter, DJing for my son. They're just, we got a super musical family and my dad took us to see the Beatles in 66 when I was seven. And I told Ringo when we were back last summer, I said, Ringo, you know, 50 years ago, wow. I was a couple blocks from here at Olympia Hockey Arena, and I saw you guys, and he goes, is that near here? And I said, well, it's torn down, it's a parking lot now. And after the first song that night, I had a lot of friends from Mont High School, my high school back in Warren, Michigan, and they came out to the Fox Theater, and after the first song, he stopped the band, he said, I was talking to my friend on the other kids, and when he was seven, he was taken to see a band, and I was in that band, because he's from here, you know, and he mentioned yeah. my name. And oh, that night, on the, the next night on the plane, I said, Ringo, you don't know what that meant to me with all my friends there. He says, if I knew it meant that much, I would have said more. He's, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's he's amazing. A good... He's a great friend. I, I saw them in uh, at the Cow Palace in San Francisco around that same time. Oh, uh, you saw the 66 tour. That was right before Candlestick Park, which was their last right. gig. And, and my most vivid memory was it took about a minute to figure out what song they were playing because the girls were screaming so loudly. You really couldn't hear them. I hear you. Yeah, you couldn't I, hear them. I, yeah, I agree. To listen to Sirius Beatles, Sirius XM Beatles station. Oh, on, on Sirius XM, yes, I, they do, they're doing a nice job. I'm going to be on that show tomorrow night at 7. We'll tune in. We'll so definitely tune, tune in. Tune in, man. Um, I, I hear, too, that you also play with one of my other favorites, Steve Vai. Oh, yeah, we were in the David Lee Roth band for seven years together. Steve Vai, Billy Sheehan, and I. Oh. And then my brother came in when Billy left. So, yeah, that's Steve's one of my best friends. Oh. He just sent me an email yesterday because he knows I love Rodney Dangerfield. And it was a bunch of new one-liners of Rodney's right before he passed. It's so great. We're dear friends. Oh, well... Next time you talk to Steve Vai, tell him that his biggest fan, Cat Ellis, lives out here in Temecula, and I look forward to seeing him at NAMM show again. <laughs> okay, you and, got it. And Billy Sheehan, too. I love Billy Sheehan. Yeah, I do, too. He's so great. Tell us a little bit about next week's clinic. Yeah, we're going to talk the, the number one topic I always like to cover for all ages is vocabulary, because it's really about... It's like trying to speak at an interview for you guys or trying to write a book or trying to, if you don't know different words and how they go together in sentences and paragraphs and pages and chapters, how can you successfully make a living as a drummer? So I talk about vocabulary, big beats and fills, but the hard thing is, the, the, the important, crucial element is that it needs to be stylistically diverse in different styles. To me, as a drummer that makes a living playing different kinds of music, that's all I've ever done is play drums. And so I need to really be equally 
was good, you know, and jazz and rock and R and B and and Cuban songo music and Brazilian sambas and Icelandic folk songs and whatever you can throw at you. Yeah. Mm. So that's what we're gonna be talking about the most is really delving into vocabulary. And then I love to field questions, but I always steer it back to the other most important topic. If you wanna play in a band, you've gotta be someone that other people want to hang out with. Don't be a backstabber. Don't be someone that's down. Don't be negative. Don't put people down, especially kids that think it's cool to put other people down. That makes them look cooler or whatever. It makes you look insecure. It makes you look worse. Try to lift people up. Try to be a light. Try to be funny. Try to just lift people up and compliment people musically and personally. And that's half the pie. A lot of drummers I know are great drummers. A lot of musicians I know are great musicians. But they don't really, some of them, it just doesn't click. And when you're on a tour bus, it's, or a private jet like Ringo, I call it Air Ringo, <laughs> when you're on that bus, it turns into a submarine real fast. And if one person is bringing the vibe down, that person usually doesn't last very long. People, musicians are fun-loving. Music is such an uplifting, you know, uh, not a job. It's a, not, even, not even a job. It's just an uplifting way of life that you, know, you got to just celebrate that so that's not the thing i'll be talking about a lot, a lot when i get out your way well i know you've got a young man who's hunger hungry for sushi but is there anything you'd like to throw in before we say goodbye well just that cody is, is cody and his mom Lori. you know they're, they're the reasons i'm, I'm coming down I, I got to meet cody size what a great drummer when he first came to my Groove camp. I have these groove camps where I teach drummers different grooves. And he came years ago to the camp, and we just really hit it off. And his mom and dad are so awesome. They mentioned, you know, coming down. And I'm just really excited. And I also want to mention it's super important. I couldn't do these types of events if it weren't for my sponsors. I play Dixon, D I X O N, drums and Sabian cymbals, Vic Fur Sticks, DW pedals. Remo drum heads, direct sound headphones, and Latin percussion and cowbells and wood blocks and timbales and things. So without those companies, you know, and of course the support of, of, the, of the festival, you know, I wouldn't be able to do these things. And I get to go all over the world. My degree in college was music education, but you know, I'm not teaching school bad. Like my degree that would enable me to. I'm, I'm teaching. I love teaching. I love giving back, you know. It sounds like you lead a blessed life, Greg. Oh, I am so blessed. I am thanking God constantly every hour of my life because, uh, oh man, my, my son and daughter, my brother and sister, my friends, you know, my career, I'm just so incredibly blessed. So thank you for, for saying that. And thank you for blessing us with a little bit of your time. It's been a joy talking with you. And all your music as well. <laughs> We look forward to it as well. Thanks for your time, Greg. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Take care. Bye -bye. Thank you, Greg. Thank